I am not black, nor do I consider myself to be black. Many people mistake me for being Negro because they don't know that I am currently living with the heartbreak of revitiligo. That's a skin condition that's the opposite of what Michael Jackson's got. Ever morning I apply this topical ointment made of bleach and sulfur. I like to think it works. Luckily, I hadn't gotten much darker in the last few years. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what's called a coon. What is a coon, you may ask? Well, to discuss this, we have to go all the way back to the 1800s in America, where the word was born. And a very short and digestible explanation. Many white slave masters often describe their slaves as lazy, non-hardworking, slow-talking, slow-walking, inarticulate people that don't deserve freedom. A lot of white slave masters began to accept that idea, which then abbreviated the word coon to black people and the word coon abbreviates from the word raccoon. Many early illustrations viewed black people with really dark skin, big red lips, big eyes, huge white teeth, and clothes that were all tattered up and mainly showed them lying down and eating lots of watermelons. It wasn't long until this coon caricature began to show in entertainment. Menstrual Shows was an American racist form of entertainment in the 1800s that consisted of comic skits, dancing, and music performances that depicted people of African descent. White people often performed in blackface to portray black people in these shows. White people who dressed in blackface portrayed black people as dim-witted, lazy, superstitious, happy-go-lucky people and the audience loved it and it became massively popular. The two main stock characters of these shows was the slave and the dandy. The dandy character was often played by the white man who was self-made, brilliant, and smart and who exuberated wealth and class and power. And whenever he would meet a slave or a black person, he would often describe them as ruthless, lazy thugs and would treat them as such. The location for these shows, or what these shows location was mainly, was on slave plantations. Eventually, actual black performers, actually black people began to perform in these shows. And the sad reality is, is that while they think they were in on the joke, they were actually being joked on. The most famous black performer or comedian was Billy Kersans who did a lot of tricks with his enormous mouth. He did a lot of dancing and singing and acrobatics and drew a lot of people into his shows. His stage persona was the slow, dim-witted, lazy black man who looked dumb for white audiences. He even sang songs that reinforced those negative beliefs. To me, he was the earliest sign of the negative reinforcement of stereotypes black people dealt with. Menstrual shows done its job for shaping the assumptions that many people had for black people, and it became the ideal image for what a black person was. This influence didn't just affect white audience, but pretty much the entire globe. The influence of menstrual shows was so monumental that its influence of coon caricatures began to arise on feature film. Now that we are here, we have to discuss the man who has delivered us the ideal coon caricature in film, and his name was Steppen Fetchett. Steppen Fetchett was a black comedian and film actor who was very successful at the time. Probably the first ever successful black actor. For his roles though, he never really changed his persona. In every film he was in, audiences even dubbed him the laziest man in the world. They called him that because for each role he did, he played a very slow and lazy and low jaw talking and walking character. That's all he was in movies. He was just a comic relief character to make the audience laugh. Which was the role a lot of black performers had, just being a comic relief character and not someone who was smart and educated. It's important to note here that a lot of white people began to view black people as inferior to them genetically and psychologically. They believed that black people were lazy, non-hardworking people that were slow, dumb, all that other stuff. So when they go to movie theaters and they see their representation of black people being true to the screen, they begin to inherently believe it and accept it as fact. So whenever they see a black person, they yell out coon, 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 and all these other negative racial slurs. Fetchick characters were a perfect mold for what white people had in their minds. A tall, skinny, big feet, bald, butchering the English language, 
lip laying down low and talking as if everything was in slow motion. It's very degrading seeing Fetchit play such a negative portrayal of black people or black men at the time and made millions off of it, which is great, you know, get your money, you know, get your money any way you can at that time. But I ask myself all the time, but at what cost? It's funny how he reinforces those negative stereotypes because it reminds me of two people that I'm going to be discussing in this video shortly. So where are we now in terms of the word coon in today's society? In my opinion, and hopefully you as well, the viewer, the word coon is a very, very negative racial slur towards black people that has a period, a dark period of racism and bigotry towards black people and a lot of negative self-beliefs that are being held today. But what really inspired me making this video was the resurgence of old Vine videos by King Batch. I hope you guys know who King Batch was, you know famous vine star internet star actor whatever whatever and johnny watermelon who was this tiktok person who i think a tiktok black woman who makes these sort of weird cringy videos of her eating watermelon in a sort of weird obsessive way it's very cringy it's very cringy to watch and embarrassing to watch as a black person take a look When doing research for this video and finding out who Stephen Fetcher and Billy Chrisans was, I find myself looking at this weird, similar, particular timeline of coon behavior, if that makes sense. I concluded that the idea of a coon or the modern day coon is very different for a white person's point of view and a black person's point of view. And it very much depends on the specific era that we're talking about. For the white person's point of view, Fetchit and Chrisans are the perfect examples of a coon to them. Someone who is, again, lazy, slow, useless, non-hardworking, happy-go-lucky, etc. But for modern day coons in our era that we live in today, a lot of black people would agree that in terms of a coon, they would describe it as a black person who holds white people up to a higher standard than themselves, ignorant, adhere to racist dated stereotypes and wears it as a badge. Coonery or coon behavior is a weird self-expression type of thing. So for me, while these two ideas of a coon very much differ in terms of time and perspective, they hold one thing that is very, very similar. Just this one, one, one thing. Do you know what it is? It's making yourself look dumb for white people, for their inner entertainment. I would believe that a lot of white people who see these old King Batch vines and even Johnny Watermelon TikToks and view those types of tropes as believable and views it as comedy. Do you see the deja vu I'm talking about? Do you see that weird timeline in this sort of like idea of black comics that do these coon behavior? I don't know if they try to differ it from comedy or self-deprecation but those two things are very much different and let me explain why to me self-deprecating humor is a sort of individual type of thing you're very much making yourself look critical you're kind of making yourself you're, you're making fun of yourself in a very humorous way you're just like oh, look how lazy i am but the type of humor these people are doing or those two examples i brought up is a humor that is not just an individual type of humor or making fun of yourself you're pretty much making a certain basis and reinforce negative stereotype for a collect a collective of people which is black people only pass i can give for people like a fetch it and like a billy Kersans is that they were in some very harsh horrible racist environments at the time and they were not much positive black heroes at their time the only the only two i can like mention is like harriet tubman and like frederick douglas but i 
those were not even enough for black people to have a much higher self-esteem within themselves so that's the only pass i could give for them but for today's society there are more than enough black heroes and more than enough successful black people that gives us a certain type of heightened self-esteem and self-worth it's not like back then where there was like two people we have like more than enough based off the effects of people like a martin luther king you know the activists the writers the entertainers the authors things like that to be honest i don't hate king batch i don't hate johnny watermelon you know i'm only commenting on their past and hopefully not present behaviors obviously not because you know johnny watermelon is still making those cringy ass tiktoks i don't know these people personally i don't want to keep i know i keep dragging the word coon on this video but it's only for just it's much bigger than them <laughs> so in conclusion i just have to remind myself that this type of coon behavior or self-expression is just the result of the horrible views that white people had for black people and that they perpetuated for centuries and its effect is still having a grippling hold on black society today. This ends this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to comment your thoughts on this video and maybe give your thoughts on what I've said in this video. So yeah. Again, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and um, thank you guys so much. This was Mark Arroyo. Farewell.